Hi, everyone, and welcome to Take 5 with Pelican Corp, where we explore some of the issues facing the damage prevention industry and creative solutions and processes to overcome those, uh, those challenges. Uh, today, I have with me, obviously, my colleague, Jason Manning. Jason, you want to say hi? And then hey, Rick, <laughs> Rick Hurlbert. Hi, uh, Rick, Rick is a collection superintendent at Greater New Haven Waste and Pollution Control. And then I also have with me Pat Moran. And Pat, you are the assistant director of field operations at Regional Water Authority. Sure. Um, Jason. Yeah, so we thought we'd start off, uh, gentlemen, and just perhaps ask both of you to, uh, to sort of briefly describe uh, your organizations. Perhaps we can start with Rick. If you can just tell us a little bit about GNH. Yeah, um, I've been here for 17 years. The Greater New Haven Water Pollution Control Authority um, ha was formed back in 2005, where it bought out the cities and towns around us. We own 550 miles of sewer, <coughs> 30 pump stations, and uh, I'm pretty much in charge of the collection system, not so much with the uh, I, I don't have a lot to do with the plant or the pump stations themselves, but all uh, the 550 miles of store and the way it comes here and everything else to do with it. So, and I also uh, am in charge of other departments, uh, call before you dig, being one of them. So, I guess that's how I got here. <laughs> Great. All right. Thanks, Rick. And Pat, could you tell us a little bit about Regional Water? Well, the Regional Water Authority is is what was the old New Haven Water Company, which is uh, was formed in 1849. Um, Back in the early 90s, uh, it became the Regional Water Authority. Uh, we service 15 towns with drinking water. Um, we own watershed land in several other towns that we maintain. Uh, I believe there's 1,750 miles of water main uh, from 2 inch to 72 inch. Um, four major water treatment plants, uh, several well fields. And we serve a population of uh, uh, approximately 400,000. Great. Thank you very much. Fantastic. So, Pat, uh, both Rick and Pat, uh, but I'll ask Pat first. Uh, both of you obviously uh, ran into a couple of uh, challenges in regards to efficiency when it came to managing your low grade requests that caused you to look towards uh, both creative processes and technology solutions uh, to kind of overcome that. So, starting with you, Pat. I believe your challenge was around kind of a daily backlog of locate requests. Can you kind of explain a little bit about what that looked like and what you were facing there? So we had a uh, we had a ticket management system at the time was probably 15 years old. It was based on laptops. Each technician had a laptop and uh, it was probably state of the art when we bought it. Um, but over time had fallen um, uh, behind and technology was was going ahead in leaps and bounds um, and to the point where um, the economy was picking up at the time and uh, um, there was a lot more work going on in the New Haven area and there was a lot better education on the call before you dig side so more tickets were getting called in and we were at the point where we were on any given day behind by up to 400 tickets so wow. tickets that were either due that day or past due, you know, two and three days. So contractors had the green light legally to go work. And we hadn't been there yet to mark. And uh, that's a that's a crisis that could involve uh, not only liability to the Regional Water Authority, but we could have been fined by uh, Connecticut Pura um, for not meeting our obligation legally. Uh, I think that's a pretty common problem. In fact, Rick. Uh, GNH also had a similar challenge in terms of efficiency. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, how GNH approached it? Yeah, well, I, I think the man hours required to manually go through the call tickets, print them out, uh, put them on a work or look up the mapping. We weren't quite as far along with our our GIS was just coming all into play. So uh, before I get it, you know, we were just starting to get it on our phones and everything else. So Prior to that, it was manual. Everything had to be printed up, the, the time putting it into the work order, then dispatched employees to all the areas. Uh, and even those that didn't require markups so was a problem. I mean, you send a guy out and you don't have infrastructure there or you got to get on the phone within the area. It was very time consuming. So 
we were, um, I want to say we were really pleased when something like this came along to be able to have the opportunity to jump into this. So, and, and we haven't been disappointed. I'm here five over five years right now with Pelican Corp in the program that we're using right now. So very pleased with it. That's great. That's great. Thanks for that. And then uh, Pat, can you explain a little bit about, so you have this challenge, you look to um, both uh, Pelican Corp and then also you change some processes internally. Uh, what did that look like and what solutions did you put in place? Well, one of the big challenges uh, was that we were uh, starting to see, which we hadn't seen in years, uh, some of our senior people were retiring and um, the company was um, not very responsive in filling those positions. So I had a lot of younger guys trying to do the same work that senior guys were doing. Um, as I said, the, the old laptop system required that those technicians would come in every morning someone in management would have to download their work for them on each individual laptop. And then at the end of the day, the tech would have to bring the laptop back and that would have to be synchronized back into the, to the system. And then someone in the evening from management would have to call through that work and re um, divide the work up for the next day. So it was very time consuming. Um, and one of the, things we were looking for was a system that would dispatch automatically. Um, and in talking to Rick about what he was working on with Pelican, um, you know, we started the conversation at that point with Pelican uh, looking for a solution, looking for the next system that would replace the system we had. And I think as part of that, we, we helped, we were in on the ground floor of um, ticket access, um, you know, and we found that by using ticket access, it automatically it paired our GIS system with our ticket management system, and it was able to look at each ticket based on what the contractor had provided for uh, markout area, and it could, it could answer the question, do I need to send a truck to this tomorrow or don't I? And uh, now all of our technicians have iPads, um, so they're connected at all times with uh, the system. Uh, they automatically get GIS updates on their iPads and they get real time. Uh, when a ticket comes in, it automatically is sent out to the, to the technician in that geographic area. The, the, the ticket access uh, does all of that automatically. And that, that ended up cutting out about 40% of our staff work here in the office which was uh, wow. it's a huge savings a huge savings that is that is big um rick can you tell us a little bit about how gnh used ticket access or screen access as we call it now uh how did how did you guys sort of uh, implement it what strategies did you use um i hate to, to say kudos to pat over there but i'm going to over here okay. and we're not we don't work for the same company so let's let's just make sure I, you understand that uh, a lot of this started from it was Pat's fault, I would say that a little bit because <laughs> Pat, was, Pat was on a, a weekend job on a Saturday and he called my phone because there was not a mark out going through a yard. And I remember it like it was today. And uh, and when Pat did that, I had GIS at the time on my phone and I said, Pat, you know, I mean, it's a gravity line that goes through a yard. Would it help if I just took a screenshot of my phone and sent it to Oh, of course it would. So that was like, uh, didn't even know that this existed at the time <laughs> that I said that to Pat, yeah. um, Pat Moran. And uh, when that happened, uh, Pat says, yeah. So when I, uh, within the next, um, I don't know, several months or whatever, I happened to be in the right place at the right time. And I, I used that all the time. I walked into uh, one of the offices from someone from Pelican Corp. And uh, and when I walked into that office, uh, it was Nick. And I said, when are they going to come out where you just send the maps? He said, oh, you're in the right place at the right time. <laughs> so today, five years later, OK, both CBY tickets and mapping are now delivered to multiple email addresses here at the GNHWPCA and simultaneously to the contractor performing the excavation. 
The mapping is to scale and it's to be used in the field by the, the contractor who really knows what to look for in this information when working within the, our district. Um, it's also a high priority that, you know, and low priority areas and, and that gets separated within our own email system. So if we have something that is critical, listen, we're still marking that. Uh, if there is something that has no infrastructure in the area, the contractor is notified instantly that there's no infrastructure in the area. So I could tell you that we eliminated about on my end, because I'm in the sewer business, there's some businesses can find another way to use this, but we eliminated the markouts of, I'd say 80% of, of 85 or at least 85% of those we do not have to send somebody out to because Pure does accept maps when it's to identify repeating patterns and the mapping is there. And, uh, I mean, and we find out that we look at the map, the same map that the contractor is looking at when he gets it delivered to him. We make a phone right. call. And say, Listen, you're you're good to go. I'm looking at the same map you are, and if you look at page two, you're all set. You're ready to go. So, really, it changed the way we do business here. That's that's a pretty incredible statistic that that you guys are eliminating some 85 percent of those uh, from that that set. And I love, by the way, Rick. I love that you accidentally stumbled upon the automated plan response solution by sending a screen cap from your phone and then <laughs> act, and then like sort of, you know, by by pure sort of luck happened to talk to Nick about it. That's that's amazing. Yeah, Nick, Nick really <laughs> pushed me through this. Yeah, he was <laughs> golden on this. So, yeah. <laughs> that's great. All right. Well, uh, our next question that uh, I'll ask, our next and last question, which you both kind of already touched on, but uh, what was kind of the outcome um, uh, for you once you deployed this technology? Pat, you kind of already mentioned that, uh, you know, you had a 40% uh, reduction in time spent on uh, the locate request process. Uh, what other gains were you guys able to achieve? Well, I think for us, um because all of our mains are pressurized, we do respond to the majority of the tickets. It clearly cuts out at least 10% of our ticket response every month. Um, and I think the big gain in, in there, the 10 doesn't sound as good as Rick's 85, but that 10% tends to be in the outlying towns. So it's, you know, instead of sending somebody all the way to uh, Woodbridge or Walcott, which is on the outskirts of our territory, um, the, the system automatically sends that contractor that email saying that, you know, you have no RWA facilities within your mapped out area. And if you have any questions, here's the number to call and we'll uh, be glad to answer questions or send someone out there. But we cut down on travel time immensely. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that happened is, um, you know, who knew we were going to end up in a pandemic? But by having the iPads that the guys keep in their company trucks and uh, getting real time ticket dispatch, they don't even have to come to the office anymore. So right. when COVID hit last year, we were desperately looking for ways to keep our people separated and not come into the office. And I already had the solution, you know, already in service. Um, those guys, they come in like once a week to get gas and paint. And uh, they leave their houses in the morning and they're, they're on the job. We actually are fortunate that we have guys that live in uh, the geographic areas that they cover, you know, so we keep them in the same areas all the time. They know all the contractors, they know the streets, um, you know, the system is integrated with GIS, so they're looking at one map. Um, I mean, it's just had a ton of good um, gains for us. And like I said, you know, who knew we would be in this predicament, but, um, right. uh, you know, we were searching for years. We talked about, gee, could the guys take their vans home and just start out first thing in the morning? And, and we could never find that. Um, the way to do that, but COVID for, forced us into it, and so now we're we're probably not going to go back to the other, to the old, to the old ways where the guys come to work every morning here. So. Great. 
And Rick, can you tell us a little bit about, I mean, you've already mentioned a pretty impressive number um, of tickets that you've managed to eliminate, but what other benefits has GNH seen? Well, I, I think the outcome, they talk about the outcome, I think it was welcome. I, I don't want to, um, I think it's a great program. Uh, there was some training that took place, and the training was to the contractor, and it wasn't that hard. So I don't want to scare you by saying that. But once the maps started going to people, they really didn't know what they were getting from me. And uh, all it took was a phone call. And and I would say within the first six months or so, those contractors that I work in our areas, because you find out in, in certain areas, a lot of the same contractors are always working there. And every now and then you end up with a few extra new ones. But the training was teaching them that Listen, this is what you're going to get. The maps are accurate, um, sometimes more accurate than a guy who really doesn't care as much about his job and puts a line down on the road. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that when you have a scale map that's in your hands and it makes it to the excavator, I mean, that goes a long way. The contractor, you know, performing the excavation doesn't have to wait for somebody to show up to put a mark down or worry about whether somebody was out there already and marked it. Um, the other plus on, on this is that right now uh, in Connecticut, they're looking at um, uh, response, uh, APR, which is uh, uh, autom automated positive response. We're there. As soon as this map goes to somebody, that automated positive response is considered done. So I'm not the guy who has to go back and say, okay, well, let's make sure we let them know that it was all marked out. They have it already. So this is another plus for this program. And for the benefit of the, the audience here, the responses are going out in minutes, right? I mean, we're talking about uh, response in, in minutes, not hours or days, correct? In minutes. And yeah. what the contractor sees, we see a, the same thing they get on this end. So, you know, it, it's definitely, it's come a long way. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Well, I mean, I, I really want to thank both of you for taking the time out to, uh, to talk to us and share your experience and your knowledge. Uh, we truly appreciate it. Uh, thanks again to, uh, to Sam as always. And, uh, thank all of you for, uh, for taking the time out to watch this. Uh, we, uh, we hope to see you next time. And uh, with that, we'll say goodbye and we'll see you soon. All right, okay. thanks everyone. Thank you, take care now.